Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. About a week ago, I finally got around to seeing the new Star Wars movie, Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Uh, I was a few days later than a lot of other people I know who saw it uh, opening night, or at least opening weekend. Uh, I put it off a little bit so I could see it with my father uh, up in New York when I was home uh, with the family for Christmas. And uh, it's been, like I said, about a week, so all of the initial uh, flares of emotion and nostalgia have settled down. Uh, and I think pretty much most of the world has seen the movie by now. Uh, so now we get my review of it. My quick review, my spoiler-free review. Uh, I'll write a spoiler-filled one uh, later at some point. Uh, probably after it's out of theaters and I get around to actually writing it. Because there's a lot of narrative stuff that I'd like to deconstruct a little bit. Uh, a little tricky that I would have to do it from memory. So maybe that'll wait until the uh, home version comes out. Uh, but this this review is going to be spoiler free. It's, it's going to be uh, just a quick overview. And I'm going to start you off right up front by saying... Go see the movie. It's good. It's solid. It's entertaining. It's miles and miles away from what episodes one, two, and three were, uh, quality-wise and story-wise and character-wise. A lot of the stuff from those prequel episodes has no place in this movie. Uh, the uh, the effects are. By and large, physical effects, they're people in costumes, they're aliens that have been sculpted by hand uh, and put on to, to actual people or armatures. Uh, the story isn't needlessly complex, uh, and what complexity there is is generally well done. The dialogue is generally quick and snappy. Uh, there's no really, really horrible horrible, cringe-inducing, awful dialogue or characterizations. Uh, and even more importantly, there's no horribly stereotypical present representations, uh, and in some cases of in the prequels, some horribly racist um, stereotypical representations, which I know when I saw um, The Phantom Menace for the first time, that was one of the things that utterly shocked me and uh, ultimately contributed a lot to ruining the movie for me was that the racial stereotypes, even put in using aliens, were still horribly outdated at the time and inconsistent with what Star Wars had always been about for me, which was that sense of wonder, that sense of differentness, that sense of... Just a place where, yeah, we don't serve your kind here, but your kind is droids. And while there may be an allegory in that, there is no outright stereotype uh, that's being perpetrated on either side of, of that sort of interaction that went on in episodes 4, 5, and 6, uh, New Hope, Re uh, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. We're back to that sort of, I'll call it purity, I'll call it innocence, uh, in Episode 7, uh, The Force Awakens. But one of the main narrative differences, uh, and, and this is how the characters start out, so there's nothing spoilery here, but in A New Hope, in the very first Star Wars movie that we saw, Luke wanted to go on an adventure. He was bored with his life. He was fed up with his life. He wanted to go on an adventure. And Obi-Wan Kenobi provided him with the venue to do so. In this movie, none of the characters want to go on an adventure. They're not necessarily thrilled with where they are, but they have reasons for wanting to stay where they are. And reality intercedes. Their own sense of right and wrong intercedes and compels them 
to go on this adventure. It's not something they want to do. It's something that they end up having to do in order to be true to who they are. And I think that's a really important big deal difference that, that speaks to the difference in time periods when these movies were made. Uh, with the original one, with Luke wanting to go out on that adventure, there is that naivety, that innocence, that I know there's something bigger out there and I want to be part of it, compared to what we see in The Force Awakens with the main characters not wanting to make waves, just wanting to continue doing what they're doing, except they can't because they discover that what they're doing is wrong, what they're part of is wrong, or that they can do more and do good in the world. And I think that's really important. Uh, I think that's something that we've forgotten a lot of uh, over the last couple of decades, is that no matter how much we want things to remain the same, things are going to change anyway. And if we go along with that change, if we get caught up in that change and maintain our sense of right and wrong, adventures will be had no matter what, and great things will come of that. And that's what this movie does. It's, it's a great ride throughout uh, with these characters, uh, with Rey and Finn and, and uh, BB-8, the, uh, the little droid who has more personality than R2-D2, and I didn't think that was possible. This little orange and white ball steals pretty much every scene that he's in. Uh, and is absolutely fantastic, uh, as a physical effect especially, and uh, deserves all of the attention that, that it's gotten. And the, uh, the main characters, uh, Ray and Finn, are good characters. They're solid characters. They are definitely in line uh, with Luke from the original uh, trilogy, with all of those types of characters who, in this case, don't have the innocence or naivete that Luke had, are, are a bit more worldly in their own ways and in their own backgrounds, but still have that exuberance, that fire inside of them that drives them forward. And they are both very, very capable characters uh, who have not been living up to their potential uh, with the lives they had before they get caught up in this adventure. Now, the bad guys, uh, this First Order, is another group that uh, is painted in some very broad strokes in the movie. We get a couple of details here and there, uh, just like we get some details on the Resistance that is backed by the New Republic that came out of Return of the Jedi. So we have something going on outside of the New Republic. This is uh, something that seems to have confused a lot of people, uh, is that this resistance movement is tangentially related to and connected to the New Republic that was set up at the end of Return of the Jedi, and it is outside of the Republic's territory. And it is serving as a resistance movement against this growing threat of the First Order, which is made up of parts of the Empire... Uh, that were out in other uh, segments of the galaxy that did not become part of the New Republic. So they've been quietly uh, building their forces, building their power, uh, and they are getting ready to strike at the New Republic uh, because they see them as a problem for their goals. Let's leave it at that. Uh, and the main character we see, and you've seen him in all of the uh, promo stuff, uh, is Kylo Ren. He wears the mask, he's got that freaky uh, lightsaber with the cross beam on it, uh, and he's another character that a lot of people have complained about, uh, and I think they're missing the point of the character. Uh, he's a little unstable. He's a little 
uh, wild and emotional, but he's also an apprentice of the dark side, which is all about those wild emotions and the power they give you, and that lack of control because he hasn't progressed past his apprentice stage yet. He is still exploring all of those conflicting feelings of anger and uh, loss in some cases and inadequacy and trying very hard to prove himself, which in my opinion makes him a really terrifying villain because you never know exactly what he's going to do. Uh, and even people... Uh, on the same side as him, are a little afraid of him, which puts him in the same class as Darth Vader in the first movie, where we didn't know a whole lot about him, but we knew people were afraid of him, and people who stood up to him without having a leg to stand on ended up on the floor, because Vader was the Emperor's favorite, and Kylo Ren is the favorite of the leader of uh, this First Order. So we've got that great uh, split between the light side and the dark side again. And we've got a fun quest that we run along with people being chased. There are some fantastic fight sequences, some great space battles, uh, the requisite large explosion. Uh, this isn't a perfect story by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, there's a lot of hand-waving that goes on in standard Star Wars flavor when it comes to ideas of how far apart are these planets and how long does it take to get from one system to another? Uh, whatever suits the narrative, the real details don't matter. So if you get hung up on details like that, you're going to be disappointed. If you're looking for a lot of explicit details on anything, you're going to be disappointed. You get what's important in the opening crawl, you get a couple of uh, lines of dialogue here and there that does explain the political situation, but if you're not paying attention, you're going to miss them. Uh, and if you're not familiar with how the real world works, you're going to miss them. Uh, because that's exactly the sort of setup we have here. We have something that is the prelude to something much bigger, which we're going to definitely see in Episode 8 and the fallout from whatever that is in Episode 9. So there's plenty of nods to the original films, to the good nostalgia value, to a uh, couple of uh, cute lines that come up here and there. The interactions between Han Solo and Chewbacca are fantastic, as always. The interactions between Rey and Han Solo are great. Uh, and the interactions between Finn and Rey and Poe Dameron and Leia when she shows up are all really, really solid. One of the more intriguing characters is Maz Katana, who only shows up in one sequence, but I hope she comes back for more because she's the only one that's been around for over a thousand years, which means she has seen everything that has gone on uh, from the uh, middle of the Republic through the uh, rise and fall of the Empire. So she remembers a time when Jedi were everywhere. Uh, and I hope we get to see more of that character to give us more of that backstory, especially since they've kind of nixed all of the extended universe stuff. So the only way we're going to get that new stuff, uh, aside from other books and media out there, is from a character like that who has been around, who does know the history. So go out and see Star Wars The Force Awakens if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, if you have seen it, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments. Uh, try to keep it spoiler light unless you put a warning there, I guess. People are still complaining about spoilers. I really don't care at this point. The movie has been out for almost two weeks and it is the biggest movie in the world. Um, you have no excuse for not having seen it. And if spoilers were that important, you would have seen it already. You can't avoid it. It's impossible. So let me know down in the comments what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. And uh, if you like the stuff I have said about it, give me a thumbs up right down there. And if uh, you like, and if you're subscribed, 
Thank you for being subscribed, and if you're not subscribed, you probably should, because we're coming up to the end of these daily things, and it's going to be a little more sporadic uh, after the end of the year and into next year. So the, the way you'll know for sure is if you subscribe. And uh, if you know anyone else who's interested in this sort of stuff, share this or one of my other videos with them so they can come and get involved in the conversation. I'm Kier. That's it for today. I guess I'll see you tomorrow.